CD and DVD drives. A CD or a DVD drive could go bad in a laptop and needs to be replaced. Some of the symptoms of a bad drive could be, number one, that it's loud. Now this could be when a disc is in or a disc is not in. Maybe there's a grinding sound. I've seen drives where when you put a disc in, maybe the spindle's loose or something's not grabbing, and it just kind of flings the CD around on the inside and makes a really loud noise that could scratch your CD. Another symptom could be that the computer won't read the disc. When you put a disc in, it might not show up in Windows or even any operating system. And third is that the system doesn't recognize the drive at all. This is either in the BIOS or in a device manager, or it might show up as an error in a device manager. I'm sure you've seen those yellow question mark and yellow exclamation marks in the device manager for certain devices that are malfunctioning. You could check for that as well on a CD or DVD drive. Now when you're checking in a device manager, don't make the mistake of thinking it's a hardware problem when it might be a software problem. I've seen CD and DVD drives that don't show up when you click the My Computer icon, but it's due to like a conflict with iTunes or something like that, in which case you have to go into the registry and delete a key called the upper and lower filters which we're not going to get into here. This is more hardware-based, but uh, it still could be that the device manager's not showing the drive, but there's nothing actually wrong with the CD DVD drive. So check that out too. Now let's go over how you remove a drive from a laptop. It's really easy. CD and DVD drives are one of the easier things to work on on a laptop. And you're usually going to see an icon on the underside of the computer with a little disc-type picture on it, like you see here. And next to that picture is usually a screw or a hole for a screw. And CD and DVD drives, for the most part, usually come out with that one screw. What you do is you unscrew that screw, pull that screw out, and then you grab the front of the CD DVD drive and just pull it out. Now here's an example using another computer. This is a Dell laptop I have here. Now sometimes there's more than one screw holding these drives in, or that there's only one screw but it's hidden like under the keyboard or in a different location on the computer. And this is mostly the case in older computers, but you never know depending on a certain brand where the screw to get the CD drive is. You just gotta search for it. Now let's take a look at the drive after we get it out. DVD drives and CD drives may look very different from model to model on computers, but they're pretty much the same. They're just um, covered in a, a case usually or have a different front plate on them or a different back fastener. Now if you look here, you'll see what I'm talking about. The front plate on a CD drive comes off and leaves pretty much a standard drive that could be used in pretty much any laptop. But don't go ahead thinking you could put this drive in any laptop because though they look the same, the front plates are not universal. In other words, the front plates have connectors on them that connect to the front of that CD drive, but they're different from model to model. So you're going to find if you try to mix and match those front plates, it may work with some drives, it may not work with other drives. So you can't just go ahead and buy any drive you want and, and put it in that computer. You're going to need one that's compatible with the front plate on that drive. The other thing that's different from drive to drive is this rear fastener. And this is where the screw that holds the CD drive in the computer, this is where the screw gets fastened onto. Now this little piece of metal actually screws into the back of the CD drive and the screw that holds the CD drive in the computer screws down into that fastener. But when you take the fastener and the front plate off, CD drives are going to look, for the most part, identical from model to model. Now the new thing is slot-loaded CD and DVD drives. Now it's not really a new thing for Apple, you're going to see most Apples have a slot loaded drive, but more high end laptops and some of the newer models, even sometimes some of the thinner netbook type models, have a slot loaded CD and DVD drive which you see here. Now for me it's worth it if a drive breaks to replace the drive. If you want to get fancy you could technically take them apart and I do recommend actually at least once in your life Take apart a CD DVD drive and see what the insides look like and see how it works. You're going to find that there's a ribbon and there's rails that it slides around. There's a ribbon cable and, and, different, and the laser and different parts in there you could check out and just get an idea of what's actually on the inside. 
But when you get down to that level, I think it's a little too fine to actually go in and do some repairs. If you can do it, more power to you. That's great. But drives are so cheap now that I just buy a new drive if I have a failing drive. The only thing I really do to repair a drive or attempt to repair it is blow out the drive with compressed air. Sometimes the drive is just simply dirty. And if you could clean it up a little bit and get out maybe some chunks that are blocking the drive or covering the laser or causing a malfunction, you could get a working drive out of that. Let's take the compact computer that we looked at earlier before and see how we would go about ordering a replacement drive for that. I'm going to show you the process that I use. The first thing I do is get the model number of the drive we're trying to replace. This one is CRX835E, which you can see by the arrow up there. Now the place I like to buy my drives is on eBay. So the first thing we do is type in the model number CRX835E into eBay. Now that model number is obscure enough that we can just type that and that only will probably get uh, search results just for that CD drive and we do. So we got 19 results here different varieties. Um, of course I'm going to sort them by price first. Now if they want to use one, I'm going to keep the search results as they are, just sort it by price. Look for the cheapest one that's sold from my country. Uh, here's one sold from Texas. And they have good feedback, 100%. They only have 181 feedbacks, which is in eBay, it's not the greatest. You want somebody who has sold thousands if you really want to be safe. Let's try the first one on the list. They're from New Jersey. And they've sold 405 items. They have 100, so that's a little bit better. Um, $25 is the price. And let's see. Its item is in work, working perfect condition. It was pulled from a 100% working HP laptop. Okay, that's fine. So the item condition is used. Now, if we really wanted to uh, get a search result a little more narrow and try to find a new one, let's just type the word new in there. See what comes up. Only one result found for new. And two items found in eBay stores. I've bought from eBay stores as well. They're fine. And this is in Taiwan, the new one. So I don't like buying from another country just because it takes too long to get here and the shipping is more expensive. So I'm probably going to stick with a used one like I looked at before. So anyway, and we'll probably buy the one there from New Jersey, the first one back in here. And that looks like a good deal. Now I'll just end off this movie by showing you a series of clips of me taking drives out of different laptops just to give you an idea of the variety of ways it can be taken out and uh, just the methods that used to get that done. Now this compact is one of the ones I was talking about earlier where it's a little bit of an older machine. You actually have to get under the keyboard to get the CD drive out. And to get under the keyboard you first have to take off this plate that sits above the keyboard. I unscrewed two screws from the back a little bit earlier and with those screws out now I can just pry it up. It's easy to pry from getting under the hinge covers with like a flathead screwdriver. That's how you get that plate off pretty easy. Then we've got to take off four screws above the keyboard, get the keyboard off and then we have access to the CD drive. Now. In more recent years, they changed the design of most laptops to make it easier to access the CD drive. But this is how you did it when this computer was made, which is probably around 2003, 2002 perhaps. Now you just flip up the keyboard. You can leave it attached and it exposes the two holes where you have to put the screwdriver in to get those screws out. And then the CD drive will come out after that. There's one. There's a second one. Push a drive from the inside, pops out, and there you go. Now another laptop I'm not a big fan of because they get a little bit intricate is the Sony Vios. And for this one, which is also an older model one, you got to get under the hard drive to get the CD drive out. So you take the hard drive cover off, then you got to take the four screws off that hold the hard drive in. There's the tiny screws. Can't really see it in the camera. You pull the hard drive out. It slides out and pops up. 
which exposes two screws there and there that you need to unscrew to get the CD drive out. There's one. There's the other. Now there's nowhere to push the drive out from the inside really, so we're going to take our paper clip, put it in the drive hole there, open up the drive, and then pull it out that way. This is a pretty simple one. This is just an HP DV6000. The one screw, like we talked about earlier, pops right out. And here we have a Toshiba gaming machine. Another, another one where you just take one screw, because this is a newer model computer. One screw, pull the drive out. And this one actually happens to be an HD DVD drive. Well, thanks for watching this video. Hope you got something out of it.